The next thing I might want to install to augment virtualization is something called Wine. Um, and that will let you run Windows programs inside of Linux but without going through VMware. So it's not actually a virtual machine, it's, it's pretty much running sort of natively. And it uses some neat tricks to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and, and say sudo and apt-get install and wine. And it'll go out and find it, and I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And we'll apt-get, you know, we'll allow that to download. So it's got to grab a 100... 113 megabytes. Maybe that makes things a bit easier to see for you. Everything seems to be going nicely. And it's just grabbing some of the, the basic fonts and things. Um, that it would need to emulate a, a Windows environment. and. It'll put a dot in front of it, and in, in, in the, you know, Linux, if you put a dot in front of a folder, it hides it, makes it hidden, but in front of dot, we'll, we'll go inside that in a minute when it's done installing, and dot one, and you'll see that it actually creates pretty much a, a mock Windows directory file structure, like a C drive or a C partition. Okay, so now it's installed, and if you'll notice, it's here on the menu, and it's set up, and, you know, I even have a notepad. So there's notepad. It's going to, you know, run or emulate the Wine environment there. I'd much rather use Gedit, but you know, if you need it for installing and, and configuring Windows software, it's there. And I can select Browse to C drive, and this opens up sort of my mock C drive. But again, if if I were to go there by default, you wouldn't see that Wine folder. But you can go here. You can either do a long listing from the command prompt, or I can go here and I can check this option: Show hidden files. And notice I'll go down here, and then here are all of my hidden folders. And there's Wine with a dot in front of it, and here's my C drive. And there's actually just just like you would see on a Windows machine. There's a Program Files drive, um, Users, and Windows. You know, if it were Vista or if it were Windows 7 uh, versus XP. So it it does a nice job of emulating that. And again, if I w if you were to see how that looks from the command prompt, here's a normal listing. But if I do ls dash l for a long listing you'd see that and then if I use the A option that will show hidden files now you can see all of the hidden folders inside of my home directory and there's wine and to get there I just say cd space dot wine and I'll do a long listing and again here's you know this is my this is my actual windows drive here so if I go to drive C it's set up in a mock fashion just as a C drive would be set up in. So yes, you have VMware which is, is awesome, it's free. You can implement virtualization that way, but the problem with VMware is there's a huge performance overhead because you're going through a host operating system. So when you try to do something like play a DirectX game or something that's graphically and CPU intensive, um, VMware is not your best choice for that. Now running server services, that's fine. Wine, on the other hand, is a nice alternative for something like games. Um, and actually, I don't want to exit. Let me just recurse out here a few directories and go to downloads. And we'll test this out with Half Life 2. Okay, and uh, with Wine configured and installed, um, let's test out a package. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a game. Um, I've got a, a copy of Half Life 2. Um, and. I'm just going to remove this. Just, just a, this was a RAR file, but since we're talking about software installation, might as well use some more options with the the apt-get command. But I needed to install. I, I just went out and googled. I was looking for a free unrar utility, and I found unrar. 
and there's also unrar free okay and it's not installed and make sure that I get rid of that one too yeah we used to remove command and unrar free and I, I found two of them just to show you that you know I mean it's so easy to find packages out there so and to install them I just used apt-get install unrar and that's sort of the third-party version and again if I use it I'll just bring up the switch options but notice notice copyright Alexander Rochelle but then there's also a free one I mean they're, they're both free but that's just giving credit to the developer and unrar free and depending on the multiverse, uh, the universe, uh, free, non-free, whatever the repositories are that you have set up, and that's that's a good option for another tutorial. We'll do a tutorial on setting up repositories and more on AppKit and everything. But for now, um, if you wanted to take a peek at those, they're config files in the etc folder. And if I were to bring up Synaptic Package Manager, kind of getting sidetracked here but I know we're supposed to be looking at wine but if I were to go over here and then let this sync up for a minute okay and then if I were to select repositories and then here I could actually add new repositories and these are just some of the ones I've added using wget um, and dpackage and you know some of the command line tools but for Maverick Meerkat but yeah I mean I could add more repositories and this just adds them to a configuration file and that's what when you use apt-get or synaptic it uses that file to go out and find software in the multiverse or free or non-free or whatever you might be using but anyway back to wine because this is about wine and not about that we'll, we'll maybe we'll talk about that some other time um half-life uh, 2 here and i've unrarred it already it was a pretty large file i'm just going to go ahead and open up nautilus and uh, you know just a graphical version here and let's go to downloads and let me save a little space here so I'm going to get rid of my RAR file and this gives us a file that we can use to test wine out with okay and if I want to use wine I'll have to do, I'm just going to right click and select and notice that now there's an option you know snap and added to my menu so on the pop-up open with wine windows program loader so I want to use the wine emulator I'm just going to say yes oh and good you got to see the problem I, I need to make sure I either ch mod it 777 or I need to plus exit or in this case I can just use the GUI I don't have to use the command prompt either way just make sure it's executable Oop. and I don't want to open it with archive manager either let me alright so I'm gonna open this with wine I made it executable and welcome to Half-Life 2 installation I'm just gonna say next and it's gonna put it into that fake Half-Life uh, excuse me, into that fake Windows folder, program files, remember the one that was created when Wine was installed and we used apt-get. So we're in Linux and I'm, I'm setting up Half-Life. Had to whip my whistle, sorry. Cool weather. It's time to engage in small talk as we watch the progress bar continue. Yeah, cool, cool weather here in Florida. I'm in Daytona and it's probably the first pretty cool day we've had what is today by the way November the 7th oh, okay yeah so you folks who live in other parts of the world are probably you probably already been experiencing some cold weather but for us uh, it's usually about the time of year we might get our first cold day and it doesn't last that long but it's nice to have a change in the seasons I don't like hot coffee in a cold day and I can't really think of anything else to say as we watch the progress bar go um, so how are those football teams where you live and um, and uh, how was work school uh, family uh, recreational activities but anyway wine, wine is just a you know, it's, it's it's a wonderful option to add into your Linux installation whether you're using Fedora or Ubuntu as far as emulating Windows software. Things I run with this, um, the Unreal game engine I've run, Unreal 2004, Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2, um, database software. Um, it doesn't run everything that runs in Windows, 
but it runs a lot of things that run on Windows, you know, typical Windows software. It's, it's a pretty amazing emulator. And it doesn't have the performance overhead um, that running something through VMware would have. So, I mean, you actually can do a 3D game, uh, you know, something. Um, you know, now, you know, Linux doesn't really do DirectX, it does OpenGL. But a lot of games out there have OpenGL versions uh, or, you know, OpenGL capabilities. Yeah, DirectX is still pretty much a Microsoft only thing. Ask a Macintosh user. And again, while it's installing just some of the other programs I've set up, um, I installed Skype. And I need to go through the setup process now. And if you want my Skype ID, burying myself for all the world to see. Um, By the way, I, I, don't, I don't even have a phone. I just use Skype, and you know, for like two ninety nine a month, I'm not getting paid to say this, by the way, but you can make landline calls or cell phone calls uh, to anybody with a phone anywhere in the United States or Canada for only two dollars and ninety nine cents. And yes, I'm not getting paid to say that, but much cheaper than having a phone. I just have a broadband connection, and I, ha I run Skype on my cell phone. Cell phone is Mamo, by the way, which is also um, I run Debian. And I have OpenOffice, I, I, so I have a Debian and an image file um, that was developed by people in the MAMO community. It runs MAMO and I, uh, it also runs Android, so three different operating systems. And again, just some of the amazing things you can do, even on a cell phone, if it's open source and open architecture. Um, it's almost like a little mini laptop, and, and the great thing is whenever I'm around a wireless access point, I make Skype calls and it doesn't cost me anything. And of course, I know you iPhone people, you can do the same thing. Um, you know, and you can jailbreak your iPhones and whatnot, but I'm just saying that, um, you know, basically there are flavors of Linux almost identical to Ubuntu that run on a cell phone. Even Stellarium, like this program here, Stellarium, that, uh, let me go find it, yeah. This program here, Stellarium, the one that is, you know, the, the astronomy software, runs on my Nokia N900 cell phone. Uh, the exact same program, same interface. You know, optimized for a cell phone, of course, but... Um, just to show you some of the the hardware here, you know, Skype is Skype, and I'm gonna go ahead and little icon up here. Let me go ahead and sign out and I'll quit. Um, while we're waiting for this to install, also in addition, there's there's another way to you know, so there's AppGet and there's Synaptic and there's wget and there's dpackage, the dpkg command line tool. There's so many different ways to install software. As if that weren't enough, there here's the Ubuntu Software Center. And I, maybe I just clicked up here, went up here, went down here, and you can search by category. Um, I found some nice, uh, you know, web page development tools, you know, HTML development tools there. And there's astronomy software. And good grief, if you want games, there are so many games. Look at all these arcade games. Scorched Earth, one of my favorite old DOS type games. Um, you know, role-playing games, board games, card games, so many just category after category after category of tremendously useful, um, powerful, free software just there for the download. No expense, no cost. And nothing illegal there. It's, it's all you know, under the GNU GPL, the open source public licensing out there. Okay, so under Wine, I've installed Half-Life 2, and I've configured it to run with Wine, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch the game. There's the Valve logo. And then now, through Wine, <coughs> it's going to go ahead and, and bring up Half-Life 2. And loading. Okay. And here's sort of the intro, and there are the, of course, the fascist guards or whatever that you, um, so if I select new game, and here are different saves and things, um, let me go here and I'll say start new game. Of course, there's the creepy government guy. Surely you played Half-Life 2, right? If not, you must. It's an older game, but 
Still pretty sophisticated by 3D standards. To imply you haven't been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest and all the evidence. And, uh. Let me go ahead and. And I won't save there. Okay, so, I mean, you, you, know, you can see some of the wine options or applications. And in addition, let me go here and show you. Um, I mean, it's, it's truly amazing the stuff out there for wine. Let me. Go here and open and browse my C drive. All right, and this is sort of my, my fake C drive. And if I go to Program Files here and Internet Explorer, and by the way, these are just some of the applications that I have, um, you know, already installed in Wine. But I'm going to open up um, Wine's version. Oh, hang on, I have that Archive Manager set to open that. Let me change the default. Open with and change that to wine for my EXEs. And you can do this in that way when you click on it automatically. Instead of trying to decompress an archive, it'll just run the wine emulator. Okay, and going to this page, um, you know, this is sort of their version of, of Internet Explorer.